Hi all and welcome back to my channel. Today we will be doing a painting tutorial on a stack of coffee cups. So first I'll provide the list of supplies that you'll need and then we'll get right into it. So you will need a 12 by 12 canvas, a white soft pastel, you could also use a piece of chalk, some firm bristle brushes, acrylic paint, and paper towels. So here's an example of what I mean by firm bristle brushes. You want that in order to be able to have the beautiful dry brushing techniques that I plan to show you later in the video. For this painting application, I only used two brushes. Feel free to use as many as you feel are necessary. Now here's the list of the exact paints that I chose to use. You can certainly alter this in the event you'd like different colored cups or maybe a brighter background. So the very first step will be to paint your 12 by 12 canvas black. You could also do this in a very dark blue or a dark green or a dark red. Just keep in mind that whatever your background is going to be, the intent is to have bits and pieces of that peeking through on our actual canvas. As you paint the background, you'll wanna make sure you also paint the edges, allowing for complete coverage. Once this step is complete, we will need this to completely dry to the touch before we can begin step two. Should only take a couple minutes if you're in a well-ventilated room. Step two is where we will be using our soft white pastel or chalk. You could also use a white colored pencil. Might be a little bit more difficult with that. I do prefer the white soft pastel or a piece of chalk because if you have a line that you're not particularly fond of, you can just use your finger and smudge that bad boy off. So here I am drawing my table and roughly where I want the bottom saucer to be placed. So this doesn't need to be perfect. It's just giving you a rough outline of where you want your table to be, where you want that bottom plate to be, and the general placement of your cups. It just makes it easier if you prefer to skip this step and just jump straight into painting, kudos to you. I like to have a little bit more of a game plan going in. So for this painting, I am choosing to have four cups. You could also do it with just two or just three. It's certainly based off your preference. And then I have also decided that I want one of the cups to be slightly angled since, you know, not all cups are just going to be completely upright when they're stacked on top of one another. Something to keep in mind as you draw your cups is where your light source is going to be. Now I plan to have the light source of my painting coming from the left hand side so that the arms of the cups will have little highlights but for the most part be in the shadow. I would also suggest having slightly different shaped cups maybe different heights, different arms that go out a little bit further than one another and not have them all be exactly the same. If you're not quite done drawing your cups, this would be a good moment to pause before we begin step three. In step three, we will be painting the background. I will be using white, Naples yellow, raw umber, burnt sienna, and raw sienna. First, I'll be adding some raw sienna, followed by some Naples yellow. My goal is to keep my brush marks horizontal or vertical and keep them roughly the same length. I don't want them so consistent that they're all the exact same length, but I don't want a huge amount of variety in the length of my brush marks to where it's going to be distracting or take away from the texture within the canvas. Also, when I'm painting, I don't want to fully cover up the background. I think part of the appeal is having that dry brush, uh, imperfect, beautiful paint, and have the different colors and that black still show through. Another thing to keep in mind is that when I'm grabbing paint, I'm going back multiple times. I'm not overloading the actual brush. So as you see there, there's a little bit of paint but I'm going back to my palette multiple times to grab more. I think that helps with trying to make sure that you have the 
colors blending together, but not overly filling the canvas and covering up all that black. As I mentioned at the beginning of my video, I plan to have my light source coming from the left hand side. So I'm adding in a little bit of white with that Naples yellow to really brighten up that section of the painting. And then also trying to work in that raw sienna so that we have a really nice cohesive background that looks like it belongs together. So continue making those horizontal and vertical brush marks while still allowing parts of the background to peek through. And don't be afraid to add in dollops of darker color. I begin to bring in some of that raw umber into the left hand side and will also begin to incorporate it in other pieces. I love the texture and the depth that this provides. I also like how it's not perfectly blended. You can see sections of color overlapping each other and you can still see sections of that black coming through. I just really like how this style of a background develops and adds beautiful, beautiful texture. As you begin to paint around the arms of your coffee cups, don't worry about how close you're getting to the chalk line or if you go over it or if you're still too far away. We want sections of the black underpainting or that beautiful background that you're creating to peek through. That's part of the fun of creating this textured stacked coffee cup painting. So just live your best life, paint on, and just have fun with it. You can always make adjustments later if there's a part of it or a section that you're not particularly fond of. We can always add more paint. So step four will be painting the table. The colors that I will be using to paint the table are white, black, and burnt sienna. To start out, I'll begin by adding in some of the burnt sienna onto my table, working in some of the darker sections that I plan to have in shadow from the Tower of Coffee Cups. Gradually, I will begin to add in white as well, trying to maintain the horizontal and vertical movement while keeping my brush strokes very light. The intent isn't to mix the paint on the canvas, but to continue building those layers. So I have my brush almost parallel to the canvas, applying very light pressure to help build that texture and build the color development within the table. And then you're just continuing this same process as you complete the rest of the table, as well as the table's edge. After I got most of the color blocked in on the table, I decided that I wanted to go back in and bring some more of the black back into that shadow. I wanted a little bit more of an intense shadow and color variance on the table. At this point, if you're not yet done with your table, it's a good moment to pause before we begin step five. In step five, we will begin painting the cups and the saucer. So for my painting, I decided that I wanted to have two of the cups be in white and gray tones, as I felt like that would really help them pop off the canvas. Additionally, I thought that it would help with making sure that the saucer and the two colored cups had a really nice contrast. You may have noticed that I have changed my brush. So I have used one brush for the entire background and my table. And then I plan to use this other firmer bristle brush for the application on the cups and the saucer. If you also plan to only use two brushes for your painting, my suggestions would be a that you continue to only put a little bit of paint on your brush so you're not overly saturating those bristles which could potentially lead to a muddier color of paint as you're working through multiple different color variations on the different sections b 
I would make sure that you have a roll of paper towels or a towel that you don't care about. And if you feel like your brush is getting a little too gunky, you can always just wipe it off and then keep on painting. Once I have my white cups mostly laid in, I'm going to allow these to actually dry before I continue any further on them. That way I can add some beautiful dry brushing on the top to create even greater texture on this painting. Next I will begin on the saucer, which I have decided to do in blue hues as I feel that that will really contrast between the white and then the red hues that are coming out on my table. Don't worry about the fine details. Try and leave sections of bolder paint. And honestly, the best part about this is it's perfectly imperfect. And I think that's what adds a lot of the appeal to a painting style like this. So keep up the great work. You're doing fabulous. I can't wait for you to tag me in this on your Instagram or whatever social media platform you're on can't wait to see it. So if you've been following me on social media, you know that teal and turquoise are my all-time favorite colors. I will find a way to be able to fit it into any canvas one way or another. And so naturally, I had to have a teal coffee mug. I mean, can't say no to that. And then once I added the teal in, I realized that I needed a little bit of red. I wanted my shadows to pop a little bit more, but I didn't want to use black to obtain that um, more defined shadow. So I added red both into my cup and on my table in that background section just for a little bit more depth. So and then for my second bright cup, I've decided to do this kelly green which i've also chosen to pull down into my saucer that way it's not just stark on its own alone it has that color pulling your eye throughout the canvas as i began to develop the green cup i realized that my lighter tones for my teal cup also needed adjustment to add a little bit more depth and uh, brightness to that actual cup it was looking a little bit flat as was the edge of my saucer once that was complete i went back in and began doing some white dry brushing technique to the edge of my mugs to really add in some stark white highlights to do the dry brushing technique you're wanting to once again make sure that your brush is not overloaded with paint you don't want your canvas to get too saturated in one area so keep the paint minimal and then you're going to want to keep your brush almost parallel to the canvas and very lightly be pulling that across the top so you don't want to apply too much pressure otherwise you may oversaturate one area over the next but just lightly pull it across and you'll be able to see little clumps of beautiful paint highlighting over top of some of those darker sections. Once you have your cups completed, you can go back in and make some last minute adjustments. So I wanted to add in a little bit more green. And there you go, a painting tutorial on some stacked coffee cups. I really love the texture that came out in the background and within the cups of this painting and currently have this hanging in my kitchen. So if you liked this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you wanna see more videos, please click subscribe. If there's particular content that you'd like to see for like a subject matter of a painting tutorial here in the future, please comment below or send me a personal message. I'd love to try to accommodate 
all requests. And if you'd like to see more behind the scenes, please feel free to follow me on Instagram where I will be posting supply lists in advance of the videos being released on YouTube.